Hello, Tenny students. My name is Bella Lopez, and today is the third round of March Madness. Today we have The Panda Problem, read by Nathan Pichardo, and we also have Dear Mr. Blueberry, read by Lyric DeLeon. So enjoy these books. Yo, it's me again, said the slob. Did you hear about the problem? You know, the panda problem? Anyways, my friend Nathan is going to tell you all about it. Uh, today I'll be reading The Panda Problem by Deborah Underwood and illustrated by Hannah Marks. Once upon a time, there was a panda who lived in a beautiful bamboo grove, but the panda had a big problem. Nope. Excuse me? I don't have any problems. Lonely, lovely view, lots of bamboo to eat, sunny day, what could be better? Psst, this is a story. I'm the narrator, and you are the main character. The main character? That sounds important. It is, but you need a problem. Why? So you can solve the problem. That's how stories work. So, what's your problem? Do you want to go somewhere? Nope. Are you afraid of spiders? Nope. Do you need a friend? Uh, nope. Do you wish you could fly? Nope. Do you wish you were green? Nope. Is your paw sore? Oh, let me check. Nope. How am I supposed to tell a story if you don't have a problem? I don't know. It looks like you're the one with the problem, buddy. Hey, maybe you are the main character and I am your problem. What? Ridiculous. You're right. How could a sweet little panda like me be a problem? Unless... I started playing a banjo really badly. Hey, where did you get that? Where did you get that? And what if I hung upside down and sang the bamboo burp song? Bamboo burp, bamboo burp. You are definitely starting to feel like a problem. Great. And what if it started to ra rain jelly beans? Now there's a problem for you. How will you explain that? Next time, I am going to narrate a book about rocks. Nice, quiet rocks. And what if a bunch of aliens landed? How could you possibly tell a story about a burping panda and jelly bean ring and aliens? Aliens? There's no such thing as... Hi, aliens. And what if we build a boat and sailed? To Antarctica, but the setting for the story is a bamboo grove. There are no penguins in bamboo groves. Okay, we've got a main character, you, and a problem, me. So what happens next? Well, sometimes the problem gets worse, but that won't happen now, because things can't get any worse. Oh, can't they? What if suddenly there were... Two pandas. Wow, I'm tired and hungry. Very hungry. I think we have a problem. Finally, what is it? We're very hungry and there's no bamboo in Antarctica. Well, well, that is a problem. How will you solve it? I don't know. I'm too hungry to think straight. Lippity Glory. Hey, great idea, alien. Okay, Nerea. If you get us home, and we will stop making problems and help you tell your panda story. No banjos, no burping, no penguins. Really? Well, all right. Um... Together, the pandas and aliens came up with a great plan. The pandas and aliens spelled out help with jelly beans. The alien ship scooped everyone up in, in its tractor beam. And dropped them safely back in the bamboo grove, where everyone settled to a bamboo and jelly bean feast. What a satisfying ending. Yeah, I'm really sleepy. 
Wake up. We need to help the narrator tell a story. We promised. That's okay. Let's try again tomorrow. I'm sleepy too. Hey, why don't you tell me a bedtime story? Sure. We are story experts now. Once upon a time, there was a narrator, but the narrator had a big problem. Nope. And that is The Panda Problem by Deborah Underwood and illustrated by Hannah Marks. Hey, it's me, Emily. My good friend Lyric will be reading about the whale in my backyard, Arthur. Hi, I'm Lyric DeLeon, and today you're going to be reading Dear Mr. Blueberry by Simon James. Dear Mr. Blueberry, I love whales very much and I think I saw one in my pond today. Please send me some information on whales as I think he might be heard. Love, Emily. Dear Emily, here are some details about whales. I don't think you'll find it was a whale you saw because whales don't live in ponds, but in salt water. Yours sincerely, your teacher, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, I'm now putting salt into the pond every day before breakfast, and last night I saw my whale smile. I think he is feeling better. Do you think he might be lost? Love, Emily. Dear Emily, please don't put any more salt in the pond. I'm sure your parents won't be pleased. I'm afraid there can't be a whale in your pond because whales don't get lost. They always know where they are in the oceans. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I am very happy because I saw my whale jump up and spurt lots of water. He looked blue. Does this mean he might be a blue whale? Love, Emily. P.S. What can I feed him with? Dear Emily, blue whales are blue and they eat tiny shrimp-like creatures that live in the sea. However, I must tell you that a blue whale is much too big to live in your pond. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. P.S. Perhaps it is a blue goldfish? Dear Mr. Blueberry, last night I read your letter to my whale. Afterward, he let me stroke his head. It was very exciting. I secretly took him some crunched up cornflakes and breadcrumbs. This morning, I looked in the pond and they were all gone. I think I should call him Arthur. What do you think? Love, Emily. Dear Emily, I must point out to you quite forcibly now that in no way could a whale live in your pond. You may not know that whales are migratory, which means they travel great distances each day. I am sorry to disappoint you. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I'm a little sad. Arthur has gone. I think your letter made sense to him and he has decided to be migratory again. Love, Emily. Dear Emily, please don't be too sad. It really was impossible for a whale to live in your pond. Perhaps when you are older, you would like to sail the ocean studying and protecting whales. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, it's been the happiest day. I went to the beach and you'll never guess, but I saw Arthur. I called to him and he smiled. I knew it was Arthur because he let me stroke his head. I gave him some of my sandwich. And then we said goodbye. I shouted that I loved him very much. And I hope you don't mind. I said you loved him too. Love, Emily and Arthur. The end.